At the moment, we have record inflation. We've had a series of catastrophic events, but not the least of which was a very shaky withdrawal of troops from Afghanistan. And COVID management certainly hasn't been all that it was promised to be. It's possible people might be looking toward the White House and wondering what's going on. Lots of people say the Democrats are looking to push Joe Biden aside. How would they do that? What would it look like? Time to dig into some details. I'm Brendan Fallon. And I'm Lee Smith. And we're, we're over, over the, the target. target. Lee, in a recent episode, we were looking at the Shanghai lockdowns relative to COVID policy in the U.S. I think, understandably, there's a certain amount of people who are apprehensive. Uh, we know that the Wuhan lockdown in uh, 2020 was kind of a cue for governments around the world to, to lock down, um, certainly the U.S. to some extent. Right. And people are worried that given what's happening in Shanghai at the moment, a lot of mistakes that have happened in terms of U.S. COVID policy that we could see another disastrous lockdown follow in the U.S. I think that's absolutely right. I think that, I mean, people here in the United States are very concerned. We've already seen the reimposition of mask mandates in Philadelphia. I think we can assume that's going to happen all throughout the Northeast. I think the worse and worse it gets for Joe Biden and the Democratic Party at the polls, there's more concern among the American electorate that we're going to see more lockdowns. Remember that this was the political instrument employed in 2020 after Wuhan was locked down. Democratic Party officials around the country moved to deploy lockdowns, which led into mass mail-in voter chaos. One of the most telling of these polls and these polls were done by Trafalgar Group, um, and they were conducted over March. We have one where they asked people, should Joe Biden resign if the cost of gas reaches $8 a gallon? 60% of people said, yes, he should. 29.8% of Democrats said that, yes, he should. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, that's it's very interesting the way that's phrased, you know, because, of course, they're always asking voters, should so and so be impeached? Should so and so be forced to resign? Um, is so and so the worst president in American history? And so 60 percent. Isn't that surprising? Um, you know, g g given that the country is basically 50 50. So you would be able to find another 10 percent from independents and even Democrats. The interesting number that you point to is that almost 30 percent of Democrats uh, who are dissatisfied with Joe Biden. And we understand that Joe Biden is always going to have um, a little weakness or, or some vulnerability on his left flank. And that goes back to how Joe Biden was selected by the Democratic Party as their 2020 candidate, right? Um, Bernie Sanders was doing great. That's part of Joe Biden's issue with Democratic Party, with, with, with polling, right? It's going to be a lot of Bernie Sanders people. Anyone watching Joe Biden during the presidential campaign, you wouldn't necessarily think this guy was going to be the best choice for president. I mean, if he makes a lot of gaffes now, he was already doing that at that point, right? I think it would actually be quite a huge stretch of the imagination to say that Joe Biden is responsible for these policies that are coming out. Huh. Uh, I, 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 I largely agree. We're speaking uh, in agreement here. And I, I, you talked about uh, Joe Biden on the campaign trail, or rather during the debates. And remember the big important moments during the debates. I mean, Kamala Harris really came out and she shined, right? Or she won that one debate where she essentially called Joe Biden a racist, right? She started with a story about, uh, about busing and how Joe, <laughs> Joe Biden opposed it. And this was the opportunity for a young Kamala Harris. And so, you know, Biden was on the defensive. Kamala Harris wound up not doing well in the primaries and Joe Biden wasn't doing great. And so what happened? Democratic Party officials had to step in and they had to get Pete Buttigieg, Amy Klobuchar and Elizabeth Warren to move out of the way and to throw all of their support behind Joe Biden so they could take on Bernie Sanders. Right. So Joe Biden has always been the nexus of numerous Democratic Party interests, right? He's, he was pushed by the party, and I've long seen him, and I think this is what you're referring to, I've long seen him as an avatar for other things that are going on with the Democratic Party. So, uh, yeah, it sounds, it's a fitting term, avatar. He's, he's there as a medium for the strategizing of other people, of other, other elites, other big players within the Democratic Party. So that, that kind of prompts the question, if the possibility of Joe Biden being kicked out 
isn't going to be, isn't a policy question because the policies aren't really his, then it has to be a, a personality issue. And that's where I guess we start looking at things like outbursts or gaffes yeah. in terms of Russia, Ukraine. I think it was in Poland that Biden basically said that Vladimir Putin should be removed from power. That was, and then the, yeah. the press people quickly jumped in and, and tried wow. to spin that in a, in more moderate terms. Yeah. Um, then we they have the, the infamous uh, Hunter Biden laptop. Yeah. I think these are things that are cutting into the, the character, the perceived character of Biden. So I would say this is more of an issue for his um, longevity in the party than, than these policies that he, he really isn't engineering. Yeah. And I think most people know that. I think a lot of what we're hearing is uh, complaints from the press that it's much harder to clean up after Joe Biden than they thought it would be. Right. Because that's what the party was counting on, that, well, the press will take care of it. Look, I mean, the press buried the Hunter Biden laptop story. It breaks in uh, The New York Post in October 2020. And whether it's social media, whether it's prestige, uh, prestige press organizations, The New York Times, Washington Post, they uh, join efforts with former U.S. spy chiefs and say, oh, this is Russian disinformation. We're not going to pay any attention to it. Uh, Leslie Stahl famously on, on 60 Minutes tells Donald Trump, the interview, we, we, we can't verify the, the Hunter Biden laptop. What are you saying? We can't, it can't be verified. It's preposterous, right? All they had to do was look at some people Let's look at some people uh, who were emailed off the laptop, call them and say, hey, is, is this email real, right? They could have gotten a good sense, but they didn't. They blocked it. So they were counting on the press again to be able to block all this stuff. Now, as Joe Biden is president of the United States, it's a little harder to keep carrying Biden, right? They helped escort the man into the White House. But now as president, he's out there all the time. It's harder to carry him. That's all they're complaining about. I think one question that a lot of people are asking is why now? Why after so long have the New York Times of the Washington Post finally started to uh, give some coverage right. to, the, to the laptop? Uh, I think there. And are I think I think that's there. that's one cue that that yeah. maybe he's he's not getting the the kind of protection that he he's been afforded yeah. up to this point. That's interesting. I see it the other way around. I actually see the New York Times and the Washington Post articles on the laptop. I see it essentially as a, as a boast saying we control the flow of information. Uh, and we're saying now, uh, a year and a half after the election, a uh, little less than a year and a half after the election, we're, we're acknowledging that this happened. Um, but so what? It doesn't matter. It didn't come out beforehand. It didn't shape the election. We shaped the election along with U.S. spy chiefs by sitting on this information. I, I think that's what it was. I don't think they're trying to be honest at all. Right. The other thing is, you know, there's this uh, DOJ investigation of Hunter Biden that's been reported. My argument has been um, f for a number. Uh, if you look at a number of different factors, I, I don't think this is a real investigation. I I'd love to be proven wrong. I would like to see that the United States still um, still believes that uh, all people are equal under the law and that the son of the president of the United States, when he appears to have done bad things, that he will be held accountable. Unfortunately, I don't think that's where we are tragically as a country right now. So I, I don't think the, the amount of noise on the Hunter Biden laptop is indicating that Joe Biden is in trouble. I think it's interesting. You kind of talk about this arrogance on the part of, of the Democrats and, and the media. I mean, it's, it's one thing that they, they'd kind of accept, okay, the, we, can, we can tolerate what's happening with Biden, that he has these, these scandals in his background. Um, these are an embarrassment, but we can wear that. You know, we, can, we can push through that. We can still sell him and win the election. Yeah. But it's another thing that they're almost proud of that. Like, we oh, can yeah. push this guy. Even, he's this bad, but we can still push him. As flawed as he is, as much of an embarrassment oh. as, he, as he is, you're still going to vote for him. That's yeah. something else again. And right. I, I think that's exactly what happened. Look, because it was, it's not just Republican officials and Republican voters who saw before November 2020 that Joe Biden's uh, cognitive uh, faculties were seriously uh, challenged, to say the least, if not patently impaired, right? The Democrats saw that as well. Democratic Party officials saw that as well. They saw what he looked like on the stump. They saw he was aggressive. They saw he was forgetful. They saw that he was having lots of problems. Nonetheless, they pushed him, right? They eliminated Klobuchar, Warren, and Buttigieg, right? And they ran that man that they saw was having problems against Bernie Sanders, 
right? And they were going to make that man the president of the United States. So the fact that now that Joe Biden looks cognitively challenged, the fact that there's disaster after disaster, blunder after blunder, this is basically, this is, this is what Democratic Party officials expected. In addition, he's accomplished their two signature policy goals. So they've gotten everything they wanted from Biden. What are those two signature policy goals? Those of you who have been following us on mainstream social media platforms for a while know that we've been hit by censorship a number of times. Recently, YouTube put out a memorandum saying that publishers need to be careful about the way they report on Russia, Ukraine, or they risk being demonetized. This is a good reason why Lee and I have made our social media platform of choice, Epoch TV. Right now, you can sign up for a free trial. Check it out. Catch us and all your other favorite Epoch TV shows exclusively on Epoch TV. Pro Free Speech TV. Do it.